Welcome back to Theo Tech. What a delight to be with you talking a little bit about technology. You know, all leaders need to know a little bit about technology so they're not overwhelmed by it, but they're mostly not afraid by it. Gary, you've been a pastor before. Have yes, you ever I been have. intimidated by technology? Well, I have to say that I there have been times that I have been. However, I, my background before I pastored was in audio visual and I was a recording engineering major for some time in my life. So I was probably a little less intimidated than others, but still there were areas where uh, when I didn't have any knowledge or background in it where I was scratching my head and I needed help. Wow, yep. yep. You know, one of the things I've challenged leaders with, it, this is hard to say, but I've had to say it and I'll have pastors come up and say, Mike, no one has said it like you said it. And I say it this way, all the technology in the world, the best the church has been able to do is make themselves look better. True, true. Um, so they think of video. Oh, I need better video. We need CD quality music. And it's all about glorifying almost self and how well we sound, how well we look, how many mm -hmm. CDs I could push out. Right. But very few people think of technology of reaching the outermost bounds of the earth. Yes. Wow. You know what? It's so shameful that the pornography industry, retail industry, Every vice industry knows how to be online using technology to get people's money. So true. And yet maybe the church oftentimes is saying, come to us and we'll entertain you or we'll preach to you and we'll make ourselves sound pretty good with our microphones and our video screens and our audio system. And it breaks my heart to see that. What are your thoughts, Gary, on that? Well, it, it breaks my heart too uh, because I think sometimes what happens is we can believe that those things are a substitute for the actual glory of, of God. And, you know, you have smoke machines and fire coming up on stage. We, I've gone to some churches that have just incredible, I mean, literally incredible technology. And they, and they have the presence of God there too, but it, it, there will never be anything that will substitute for the presence and the glory of God. And so we have to remember in anything that we do that we have to be pursuing his presence in everything because ultimately his presence is what's going to draw people in. His presence is going to be what changes and transforms lives. So that's so true. You know, one, one of the things I was blessed by, I was preaching maybe three years ago in a church in Miami, mm -hmm. and I wanted to surprise the pastor. And what I wanted to do was to take his daughter, who's living in Cleveland, Tennessee oh, okay. um, area, national mm -hmm. area, and bring her into the church environment and surprise him. So what I did, give me one second here, is I brought to the church this device right here. Ah. And this here is a teleportation robot. And you, what you'll see on the screen as we're talking about this is that people get to be connected anywhere in the world. And so I put this right up in front of the uh, podium where the pastor was gonna come out and his daughter was on the screen. Erica. And he looks at the screen. He says, Erica, where are you? And she says, Dad, I'm in my dorm room at Austin P. State University. And she says, no way. And so I'm in control of that with my phone. And I say to Erica, hey, Erica, go up and down the aisles of the church and say hi to everyone. And so Erica turns the robot around and you'll see it right now. We're playing a little video clip of that, that doing exactly that. And Erica goes and, and everybody in the church says, is that our little Erica? Is that our little Erica? Oh, that is so and, cool. And it's rolling up and down. She's controlling it from her dorm room on her smartphone, right? So I'm, I'm used to doing this. The next week they had me come back. And while I'm back, there are an 85 year old gentleman. I asked him his age after he, he asked the question. And he's sort of hobbling up to me. He says, young man, you know, I never understood what it meant to reach the outermost bounds of the earth until I saw that mm. robot with Erica on it. I now understand what it means. And I said, touchdown, it worked. Yes. You know that it wasn't there to glorify me or make me sound better, look better, or sell more items. It was there to connect somebody into their presence that they normally wouldn't see. Now, interesting, because we could today, five years ago, bring people from around the world in and out all the time. But we have to make a conscious effort to know that a shut-in person is important yes. to be in your church. Yes. yes, Not wanting them to be there just because you're counting numbers, but that you care that they can hear the message that you think is so vital. And all of a sudden the world changes. So 
I'm amazed at the number of good preachers now who will be wise enough to use technology while they're preaching. For instance, they'll say, everyone who knows somebody who has an illness, call them up right now during service. Mm -hmm. And they'll call them up on the smartphone and have them listen. Healings after healings. Why? Wow. Because God is omnipotent. God yes. is omnipresent. He's not that great on how good I look, but he's awesome when I care enough about other people to bring them into his presence. And he's not offended by technology to allow them to come in the presence to a smartphone or a robot like this right here. Isn't that pretty cool? That is so awesome. I'm, I'm yeah. so excited about how technology can actually be used to be able to reach into every man's world. That's part of what Oral Roberts University is all about. The, the original vision that Oral was given from the Lord was to be able to reach into and go into every man's world. And it sounds like to me, Mike, that this technology can really do that. Exactly. Now, the flip of that would be is Oral Roberts University has a magazine or a, I call it a journal, right? Or is a journal, Spiritus. Or you Journal of Theology just came out. 8,000 mm. downloads and people from over 185 nations downloading digital content. Wow. I'm holding this in paper version, but the wow. truth is a lot of people don't need the paper version. They download it automatically. And so I, I've got a saying, Gary, that all digital roads lead through the Global Learning Center. Mm. And it's a carrot for me to know that if the Apostle Paul could use a term called the fullness of time because the Roman roads were ready for chariots to come in down, up and down on, you think of Philip and the eunuch, what? A chariot going down maybe a road that was just built with the technology, That's but right. he saw a need for it. And so today, a digital road leads in and out of your home, in and out of your smartphone, in and out of this robot, and people have the privilege that they've never had before. You want to talk about being excited. I, I've never been more excited, but I know I have to keep turning up the dial for other people to say, hey, I know you love your church, you love the building, but what right. do you love more than that? If you love people more than that, you might find a way to be smarter than the pornographers or the vice people that are always peddling their story. It's time we peddle our story. That's, you know? that's, that's right, yeah. that's right. So what kind of things are, are coming up that we might want to be aware of? Things that may be the common everyday Joe, like myself, I would consider myself to be uh, technologically challenged in these days. What kind of things are coming up, up that we might be able to utilize, that a pastor may be able to utilize, or a church may be able to utilize to be able to do exactly what you're saying? Oh, yeah. So there's all kinds of things, Gary, that, you know, here I'm holding up a pair of glasses that are called virtual reality glasses. And this little clip right here clips on the front of a smartphone mm -hmm. so that I look inside my <clears throat> sure. smartphone virtual reality. I don't have to put it around my head. But more importantly, you can buy these. A church could decide to buy these for $2 a piece. Wow, that's all, huh? And it goes in a pocket, purse, whatever. But more importantly, when I put this on my smartphone, watch the video that comes up when I put this on a smartphone. Now, Gary, as they're looking at that, they're seeing things that they could never see before. Mm. Hundreds of thousands of different items, such as a heart, lungs, right. thyroid. So I, I say this to people. I am, um, oh, what you say, so bothered by the reality that Pornography is so successful online. Person yes. after person addicted yes, to it. Yes, yes. But it's simple this pr principle. A church would not know this, but a young 14 year old girl will come into the church or a 14 year old boy and look at people parading up on the altar singing songs, and all they can see is hair, teeth, and clothes. Oh, and they judge themselves yes. by the exterior yes. of humanity. And so if all we do is, is let people compare their exterior hair, teeth, and clothes, they get this impression that's all about the exterior. So if I'm, my mind is wondering, it's gonna wonder about the very things I see, right? Right. The right. hair, teeth, and clothes. So on this pair of virtual reality glasses, I can bring out a thyroid and hold it in my hand, or a heart. Wild. And if I'm gonna lust after something, hopefully I'm not lusting, is it that? But I'm, I'm desirous, and so I can hold out a healthy thyroid or a healthy heart and say, God, thank you. I can pray for a healthy heart. I don't have to worry about how my legs look or how my teeth look yes. or how my hair looks. God has put me together fearfully and wonderfully and he wants me to yes. celebrate yes. all the body organs within me. But if we don't know the body organs, and that's what's so amazing to me, that if you think about it, is that 
Um, God put all these thousands of parts within our body, and he said, let everything that hath breath praise, praise the Lord. My liver has breath in it. My lungs have breath in them. And I have to start thinking about that. So in the year 2020, most people don't even know where a thyroid is located. They have all kinds of friends that have an illness called <laughs> thyroid problems or lymph node problems, which are in the thyroid, but they have no idea where it's even located. Very true. But they Very know true. where a lot of other things are located. And so, in fact, um, when you think about the thyroid, the thyroid itself, when you look at it from its exterior, it looks like the, the, a demon or Darth Vader wrapped around your bronchial tubes. Mm. It's exactly what it looks like. Wow. Until you cut it open. And so I can hold open a thyroid and with virtual reality, cut it in half, it looks like a pomegranate inside, which are the lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. faith allows me to pray over that which I see. I'm going to pray over my lymph node. I'm holding it in my hand. And you can see it right on wow. your screen. I'm putting it there for you. Yeah, that is wild. Now, I can see that anywhere I am in the world. Talk about the power of prayer. But if all I care about in the morning is getting up and worrying about how I look, my hair, teeth, and my clothes, and trying to impress people, God's not too impressed with that. God falls in love with the inner being of humanity. He falls in love with what's inside, yes. not just what's on the outside. And you think we would have learned that by now, but sure enough, I have no idea where pastors came up with the whole concept of wearing skinny jeans <laughs> or dressing down. Because now all yeah, they did right. was put a different uniform on everyone. Yep, and the right. truth is not everybody looks good in jeans. And yet now it's the new uniform. It and is. I'm like, surely we're wiser than to fool people by the outward appearance at a church. Wow. That's, oh, that's why I said it's painful for me to say this. But God's given me wisdom to know uh, that doesn't sell right. with him. Right. It may sell with humanity. And they may all hop on the leather jacket bandwagon or the motorcycle bandwagon or whatever bandwagon's going around today. But God says, not impressed. Right. I am impressed with a man or woman or child after my own heart. And I believe technology can allow people to recognize that and see that. Virtual reality glasses, we're doing That's it all amazing. the time. But wait a minute. I heard, and it's a fact, that the largest gathering of humanity happened uh, a year ago. Really? Yep. And it was with Fortnite, this game on a smartphone called Fortnite. Oh. Over 10 million people got together with virtual reality glasses and a guy named Marshmallow, that's the, the actor's name, if you would, on Fortnite. And they got together, and it's not that bad of a thing. In fact, Gary, people say Fortnite is a bad or good mic. I said, well, when you were a child, did you ever play Capture the White Flag? Sure, of course. Fortnite's that in the digital world. It's not that bad, actually. But people need to be entertained. But why isn't the church entertaining people? So on these pair of glasses, Gary, I can put these on my smartphone and have people walk over the lion's den and show you exactly what it was like for Daniel to be put inside that lion's wow. den. I don't have to read about a Sunday school <clears throat> story. I can walk in that world today. Now, I think God is pleased with that, that when we can bring real Bible stories to life for people, yes, yes. let's do it. Uh, better than a movie, I think. Uh, I, I would agree. Well, part, I know part of uh, Oral's vision was that at one time there was a walk through the Bible here uh, on campus or the other side of campus, and that was exactly what that was all about. It was about taking people in through the experience of the Bible to actually experience as much as they, they could back then when that was around. And what you're telling me now is that virtual, virtual reality is allowing us to be able to literally take are giving us the potential as pastors to be able to literally take people into the story. Into the story, but just as importantly, virtual reality will allow me to find my identity. Mm. If I can see scripture through virtual reality, yes. I start seeing how it applies to my life. And is an identity one of the biggest challenges today? It, it absolutely is. I just had, had uh, got together to do some outreach with a couple of young ladies. Yeah. And we were having this discussion about identity. And I just said, you know, we don't necessarily think this way, but we are all just complete individuals. There's not one of us that, even if you have identical twins, they're really not, they're visually, they can look identical to us, but they're really not identical. They still have their own yeah. fingerprints and their own identities. And that's, God is so awesome that he, even though he can make us all in his likeness and in his image, we still all look different. We are still, still all unique. 
in our own way. And he, he loves the uniqueness. He embraces the uniqueness. He embraces the uniqueness of Mike Matthews. He embraces the uniqueness of Gary Gennark. He embraces our uniqueness. And we need to learn, as we grow in him, we need to learn to embrace our uniquenesses. And we also need to learn how to embrace as pastors uh, the uniquenesses of other people. You know, you don't... Uh, I often said to my congregation, you know, not to be, I wasn't trying to be derogatory or mean toward them, but sometimes I'd say to them, you know, you get to pick me as your pastor. I didn't necessarily pick you, you know, and it was, I was, as a pastor, and you pastors can relate to this, there are people in your congregation who you just, you know, yeah, yeah they, they are fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you know, so whether you're a pastor, whether you're a business leader, whether you're a husband, whether you're a wife, Many people have lost their identity. We forgot what it's like to be a husband, a true man, according to Scripture. Mm -hmm. And so I am privileged to live in a day and age where I can help people reconnect with their identity in Scripture. Who would have thought we would live in a day where two, a former president and a president are arguing back and forth on Twitter? Isn't that, you know, is there any yeah. identity? Well, it is actually showing their identity. But we have the right as leaders to bring back the identity of Christ within us through many different ways. But if yes. you're just peddling the same story over and over again, you may not connect with many people. But if you take them into a different world and show them things they've never seen before, wow. In fact, about an hour ago, I had a, a, a school here and they brought a student with them to say, hey, Mike, show them virtual reality. And this young man was just blown away by all the things that they can now see and touch that they can't do in school. So if school is putting people to sleep, if church is putting people to sleep, I would say, well, let's uh, be better than Fortnite. God has created me to be smarter than Fortnite. Right. He's created you to be better right. than Fortnite, but you've got right. to want to and desire to stimulate people's hearts and minds beyond the same methods you used before. But that same Christ, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is still active and transforms everything before people's eyes. And, and Mike, in what you're telling me is to be able to enter into some of this technology, it really doesn't, and utilize it, it really doesn't necessarily take a whole lot of money to do it. It just needs a, it takes a little bit of creativity is what it, I hear. Exactly. It takes a little creativity. Another example, Gary, is that um, if I go into a church today, look outside a church, go to a bus station, wherever I'm at, I see a lot of people with earbuds in. Mm -hmm. And why, think about it, why are people wearing earbuds all the time? Think about that. It's called escapism. That's so true. They don't want to identify with other people, so if I got earbuds in, I'm only listening to what I want, stimulation. Mm -hmm. And I don't have mm -hmm. to pay attention to them, which is not healthy, by the way. And so the more I thought about it through the years, I go into Ghana, and Ghana went from, uh, this is five years ago already, went from like 4% phone coverage around their country to 100% 4G wireless connection. So you go to bus wow. st stations everywhere, people have earbuds in their ear. And I think, do they have any idea what these young people are listening to? They're connected to the internet, but they're listening to who knows what. Right. And so we thought uh, a little bit. These pair of glasses, most people know a company called Bose, B-O-S-E, Bose uh -huh. speakers. That Bose makes a pair of glasses called AR glasses. And you'll notice the electrons on the, the inner part right here. Yep, I see. And right here. And literally it sits over my glasses, or if I want them prescri prescribed, I can. But now these become my new earbuds. And we have now programmed courses so that I can walk through life, be at a bus station, I can see you clearly, Gary, I can see you at the audience, right. uh -huh. or see through glasses. But I'm actually listening now, instead of wearing earbuds to a course, and we call it the fluidity of education. People mm -hmm. are fluid today. They're, they're going back and forth between airports. The Bible promised that people yes. be traveling to and fro. And so now we can package things on a simple pair of glasses. But if I'm a smart pastor, I'm going to put my sermons on here. Oh, absolutely. Um, all my sermons, my whole collection of sermons can be on here connecting to the computer cloud. And we've actually just packaged Jim Stovall's uh, book and his biography and a lot about his life so people can explore a career on these pair of glasses. And here's exactly how it works. I put these glasses on and I click a button and I say, open my vision. And it literally brings it up. You can't hear it, but I'm hearing it in my ear right now, but my ear are free. Because many people don't have, the more you age, the, ear, the holes in your ear, if, if the canals, you can't put buds in them uh, like a young person can. Mm. So these remedy that. Guess how much these cost, Gary? 
uh, under a hundred dollars. Less than the price of a tattoo. Less than the price of a piercing. Oh, okay. Okay. And so I say that tongue in cheek because you know what? People can afford what they want. People will buy what they find valuable. Right. And somehow we have dummied down the young generation to think they don't know enough. They're not intelligent. I said, they're smart enough to know where to go find that tattoo parlor. They're smart <laughs> enough to know the uh, Starbucks long winded name, a skinny macchiato, caramel, no whip, thin, this. And I said, I can't remember, remember that. They can remember whatever they want to remember. Yeah. And so we want to help people say, you know what? God's got a plan for your life. You can take courses in a different way than you've ever been able to take them in the past. That's exciting. Now, keep in mind, this is in research. We're developing all kinds of things, uh, MQ mirrors, uh, glasses like this, the virtual reality are already in production. Uh, but what we're ultimately trying to do is help the world be educated. You know, if we just keep trying to educate people the same way, we'll have the same 6% of people around the world educated in 10 years. We yeah. should have 96% of the people educated in the world today. There we go. So do you, do you believe that some of this technology could actually help uh, potentially bring down the cost of, of education? I know that that's a big thing right now, college education and the cost of college education. Do you think, especially getting larger numbers of people utilizing this technology and utilizing education, do you think it's going to potentially bring down the cost of yeah, education? Absolutely. You know, the, the old theory, just the business economics of supply and demand. Mm -hmm. If a university has 50,000 students and they have to sell courses for $10,000 or $100, $100 doesn't matter. Now, all of a sudden, if they find 10 million students, right. of course the price would go down, right? Right. That there's, when there's volume, you can offer things you've never been able to offer before. You know, think back 50 years ago. How much would it cost you to go buy a nice leather Bible? Pretty expensive. Oh, yeah. Now you can download an online one for, last time I checked, free. Free, it wow. is free, yes. Well, now more people are reading the Bible than ever before. The Bible will always remain the number one selling book, but I read book that. too, people are reading it on their smartphones, they're buy still buying Bible. I still like to hold a Bible in my hand. So I do here, I, you got one yes I here. do, yeah. leather, yeah. leather cover yeah. on it, yeah. yeah. Now, let me say this to every pastor out there. Uh, you know, God had made a promise or a statement in Scripture that says at some point he's going to take the, the wealth of the, or the mammon it's actually called, the mammon of the unrighteous and give it to the righteous. Now, people are hypnotized by money, including churches, unfortunately. Uh, numbers and money are, you know, top priority in a way that's unfortunate. But the truth be told, mammon, it means wealth. And mm -hmm. the, the definition of wealth has nothing to do with money or currency. It has everything to do with this. This is the definition. Wealth is having access to a scarce resource in the time of necessity. Ooh, that's so good. when Joseph was a uh, person under Pharaoh, he had access to the interpretation of dreams. He was yes. became the most valuable yes. person. And so wealth, you find, has completely shifted. So I bring this up to you as leaders to find out, pay attention what God's really doing as he's shifting, not just money, because if all we focus on money, we get the wrong motives. But if I pop open my smartphone or my computer, the fastest way for me to find the right scripture is on Google, not on a Bible app. That is Google true. has perfected its search capabilities beyond anybody else. And so I use the things that were developed by the unrighteous and use it for righteous purposes. But I do that on hundreds of things today because God allows me to do that. But if all I think of is my old fashioned way of bringing up my Bible app, the Bible app companies cannot compete at that level. Now they're good applications, right. I don't wanna take that away right. from them. Right. But at the same time, if I want the quickest, fastest retrieval, if I'm witnessing to someone on a verse, Google's my way to go. Oh, not only that, when I bring up Google, I can hit on the image that will appeal to them more than just the text. And so I show them the image mm -hmm. and suddenly, I'm a what? Communicator, I'm an ambassador of the gospel of Jesus Christ in a fresh way. I can show people, and I've seen been led people to the Lord by showing them virtual reality about walking through doors, that the Bible says, I'll, I'll walk them through doors. And I say, you know what the Bible says in the book of John, that in my Father's house are many rooms. rooms yes. Would you like to walk through a couple rooms? You see, the uh -huh. Bible also says that he has given me keys, plural, not one key to go to church, not one key to go to Bible study. He's given me multiple keys so I can unlock the yes. mysteries of life. And so when we can show people that in a fresh way, 
and I don't have to say to them, come to my church. If they want to come to my church, that's great, but I'd rather introduce them to Jesus any day of the week. If they decide to come to church after that, uh, praise be to God. But we have all these things at our disposal today. And so I no longer can be a one-trick pony standing behind a pulpit and beating, beating, pointing, thinking, theorizing, apologizing. I don't like the apologetic stuff anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> apologizing for anything. But I can live and walk and have his being within my being and help people be led into the kingdom. What a day. I mean, whether it's a robot, whether it's the other things I showed you, we've got so much in our arsenal today. Absolutely. Well, not only that, but being able to, I think the important part is the multiplication factor of being able to take and if the pastor or the leader of the organization is using the technology to do that, hopefully what will happen is also, with some encouragement too, is that the, the, they'll be able to multiply themselves uh, using that technology to be able to, for the other people to be able to be witnesses and use scriptures on Facebook and all kinds of means to be able to reach the unreached. I have a friend of mine right now who is actually taking through technology and, and uh, helping to disciple people uh, online who have been reached online and come to the Lord and helping disciple them, uh, you know, in their faith uh, online, all completely online. Yep. And so, I mean, this is, ha it's happening right now. It's not something that is going to happen. It's something that's happening right now. And, and we need to utilize it to its, its maximum uh, amount of capacity. So, so if the pastors, leaders out there need uh, resources to be able to do this, who, who or what would you, uh, you know, look to or what, who should they look to to be able to help them with some of this stuff? You know, we're each different individuals, maybe different age groups, uh, whatever the case may be, have different times that we live in, meaning uh, uh, work schedules. You know, use what makes sense to you. If Facebook's the, the medium you want to use, use mm -hmm. Facebook, you mm -hmm. know. Um, if <clears throat> you, you have a family who wants to be saved, um, let somebody else reach them too. Encourage them to do Facebook out there. So I, I'm just amazed at how many people comment to me that, Mike, I didn't know that you knew my son or my daughter. Mm. I said, yeah, 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 through Facebook. <laughs> yeah. um, my wife was just here at campus today, and somebody comes in she's never met before. Oh, Pam, I know you. <laughs> I know you. It, uh, I'm Facebook because I tag her on everything. I, I'm careful on Facebook. I want everybody to know I've got a beautiful wife. I'm committed to right. my wife for 33 years. And I want to use Facebook to evangelize, not be dating people. That's insanity. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry if I offended somebody there. <laughs> tell you, Gary, here's an interesting story. You're from Wisconsin. Yes, I am. I'm from Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and his name is Gustav Bergstrom. Mm. And Gustav um, uh, came back from the missionary field. He lived in his parents' or his, or his wife's parents' town, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh -huh. It's a pretty tough area, by the way. Uh -huh. And he went through every home in Kenosha and pounded on their doors and, and witnessed to them. Wow. He did that one time. Then he did it again. He started over. And they asked him, they said, Gustav, why did you go to every home in Kenosha two times? He said, oh, it's simple. People move. And so he cared enough about people that he was willing to go two times on wow. every home. Wow. Now imagine, That's Gustav, fantastic. he's passed on now. But he would say, man, if I had Facebook, it would have been a lot easier. That's true. If I had texting, it would have been a whole lot simpler. And But his passion would have allowed him to use the technology to do this. And I, I tell people this. I love telling the story. In my opinion, based on reading the scriptures and having a couple Bible degrees that they themselves don't mean anything, but it, it gives me a, a foundation, uh -huh. is I believe the greatest storyteller of all time was Jesus. Absolutely. And the greatest demonstrator of all time was the Apostle Paul. He didn't just come with enticing words of man's wisdom, right. but a demonstration of the yes, Spirit and power. Yes, yes, yes. Now, if they were alive today, or they are alive, but if they were on earth today, Jesus would use every means possible to be even a better storyteller, to make sure the word got out. So he'd probably be using virtual reality. Now, the Apostle Paul, being a demonstrator, would use all kinds of new uh, technology to demonstrate how God moves in and through his being and their being. And so I, I'm so motivated to think, well, what? forget the bracelet, WWJD. The fact is, 
When you care for people, you will find all kinds of means to reach people. Don't be unethical. Don't be a pain to people but be wise and use the tools that God has made available. And don't just try and beautify yourself in a church service. Um, make the choir sound better, the fog lights and all the stuff. Eh, nothing wrong with it by itself, but if that's the end goal, eh, we're glamorizing a lot of us and forgetting the one who we I have so received and we become ambassadors for. So I, I hope that you're listening and you'll use some of the technology. Stick with the scriptures. Okay, and again, I hope you laughed a few times. You know, some of the stuff we're saying intentionally. You know, like the comment about skinny jeans. You know, <laughs> you know what? If it's a fad, we're all in trouble. And I don't want people to dress down or up. I want them to be themselves because when you're yourselves, you have your own identity. That's right. And that identity will change more lives than a false identity any day of the week, and it won't mislead people into their own false identity. So be yourself. And God will be pleased in that. He's looking at your heart. Gary, I know you've got a prayer on your heart. You haven't told me that, but I just feel you have a prayer on your heart for every pastor out there who sort of it feels discouraged or like I've fallen behind on the technology or I'll never play catch up or whatever the case may be. I want you to pray for the audience. I'll, I'll be glad to. Yep, I have, I <coughs> have, uh, I feel for for all the pastors because I know the struggle that you can you go through mm -hmm. on a daily basis because it's an attack against your soul and so Father I pray right now for all of those pastors and leaders out there who uh, are listening to this broadcast Father and I I I just plead the blood of Jesus over them and I, we pray and for you to just pour out of your Spirit upon them to refresh Amen. them to ignite them with vision and hope and expectation lord every ounce and every bit of discouragement that may be trying to eke its way into their lives we just say be gone in jesus name satan you are bound you are under their feet mm -hmm. father i just thank you lord that uh you that you are with the people that are with them and i just pray for other people to come around them and to lift up their arms and lift them up father god so that they know that they're not in this alone but father that you have sent people around them and you've sent angels around them and that most importantly you are with them to gird them and to guide them and to strengthen them and we just pray for the very strength of our heavenly father to just uh just saturate every part of your being right now in jesus name Amen. 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 Again, uh, we'll see you next time on Theo Tech.